good boy, boy. Ah. These, my pants are incredibly tight. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know how to start on that one. Uh, well, John, I mean, uh, obviously tested to the very limit tonight, man. Pushed by a, a contender, but you walk out victorious. I'm sure you want to go back and watch the tape and all that and break it down. But just in terms of emotion and thoughts right now after a fight like that, what can you share with us? What you're thinking, what you're feeling at the moment? Well, I, I got to start by, by just saying thank you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for, for uh, just allow me to be here on this journey um, for, for making my feet like Heinz feet and setting me on high places. This is truly a high place uh, to, be, um, to be a Christian fighter representing the UFC and, and being one of the best. Um, it means a lot. So thank my Lord Jesus for that. Um, um, my team, my team, uh, I can't sit here and name every one of them because I don't want to forget a name. But uh, the team of men around me, they have they've invested so much. And I'm so grateful to each and every one of you guys for the time that you spent away from your wives and your kids uh, being with me, helping me on my journey. Um, I, got, I got one coach that got his first world championship tonight. I'm so proud for him and I'm proud for all these guys. I want to thank my fans, my fans who's been with me through thick and thin. I want to thank them so much for everyone who ordered the pay-per-view tonight, all the fans that travel to, uh, to be in attendance. Thank you guys so much. My fiance, Jesse, I love you. And thank you so much for all the support. My kids, thank you for your sacrifice. Um, your question was, as far as you personally, I mean, obviously, great thanks for all those people, but you, right now, your emotions, your thoughts after going through a fight like that where you were really pushed to the limit, yeah. but got to retain your title. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you hear people say, you don't lose, you learn. And uh, I'm really grateful to have a win and such a learning experience. Um, Dominic did a tremendous job. I respect him dearly. I respect him wholeheartedly. And um, what a way to put yourself uh, in the history books. Um, doing it with such a hard-earned fight. You know, um, David Goggins, uh, he wrote me last night. And uh, I can't repeat what he said verbatim, but the, the, the basis of his message was, be the guy who embraces the ugly, the miserable. Um, be the guy who embraces hard work, the grind. Don't be afraid of being hurt. Don't be afraid of sacrificing some blood. You know, and uh, you know, the, the whole week I was thinking, I want to finish this fight. I'm going to finish this fight before the championship rounds. And this is, you know, I should be able to smash this guy. You know, Goggins' message it was for a reason, you know, his, his reason. And Greg Jackson's been saying it for years, be comfortable being uncomfortable. But Goggins gave me a really good reminder, just, John, you should want this fight to be miserable. You, you should want this to, to, to hurt. Um, be the guy who thrives in that. And I felt like I was that guy tonight. I, 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 uh, I had to earn during this position, you know, I think about, you know, the first person to climb Everest, you know, I'm sure people died, lots of people died, I respectfully say that. Um, the first man who, who ran a four minute mile, I'm sure he was hurting bad, you know. To be the first person to do anything, you should look like this. Um, so uh, that makes the victory even sweeter. Talk about those first two rounds. I mean, you talk about embracing the ugly and the grind. I mean, the, that guy came after you from the opening bell, showed you no respect, you know, and brought it to you. So what's going through your head those opening two rounds? I mean, is there, is there panic? Is there concern? Like, oh, my gosh, this guy is more than I thought he would be. Yeah, there's no panic. Um, a part of me just wanted to see – a part of me wanted to see how long he could keep that up. A part of me wanted to see what he had to offer. And, and – I saw what he had to offer. I also saw that he couldn't keep that up. And uh, 
you got to embrace that. You know, what I do for a living is is uh, not always pleasant. Um, it's just a big part of the game. It's, it was it was a great feeling out process. I realized that I got to take his best punches. I think my chin is very underrated. That some people are saying controversial, at least everybody's saying close, right? I mean, the decision was close. You go to the final bell, you and your team are talking, you're out there waiting. What did you think? I mean, how confident, how comfortable were you? Yes, we banked three rounds. I mean, did you, did you know or was there a little bit of fear to think maybe we came up just a little short tonight? I wasn't always confident that I was winning the fight. Um, I was confident that I wasn't going to be giving up or slowing down. Um, Greg Jackson said to me, John, you may need to win this fifth round to win. And uh, the heart of, the, of a champion said, no problem, coach. I got that. I can do that for you. I can leave it all out there. You got five minutes left. And um, I think I displayed the difference between a, a champion and an extraordinary contender. Um, he had all the tools. Um, I think he had the endurance. But something special happens. Something special happens when it's a time for the champion to present himself. Um, and you guys saw it tonight in the fifth round. Yeah. Last thing for me, John. I mean, this guy, is he a guy that you think you're going to see again in the future? Because I think a lot of people would be intrigued, just like they were when Gustafson pushed you to the limit. They wanted to see it again at one point. Is this a guy that you want to see again at one point to maybe prove a point or, or just to have an epic encounter? Yeah, I, I heard he may have torn his ACL. And if that's true, he could be out for up to a year. He, it's not torn? He said he didn't think it was, but... Uh... Um, well, it wasn't in that case. It's my job to embrace the toughest challenges. I mean, that's, that's what a champion's being about. You know, I fought DC twice. Had no problem signing the contract. I fought Alexander Gustafson twice. No problem signing the contract. And uh, if the people want to see me fight uh, Dominic again, uh, it's going to be up to uh, Dana White to find a way to make that happen. In front of you. Um, second fight in a row where kind of the post fight narrative is, oh, it was really close, all that kind of stuff. Um, Dana was in here earlier and he said that just from what you did so early in your career, the standard is so high for you or the expectations are so f high for you to perform. Um, do you think, you know, in the sense that people, it kind of clouts their judgment in a fight, they see a guy, you know, giving you a little bit of trouble and maybe they think he's doing better than he actually is in a way? Yeah, I, you know, I got to watch. Uh I think it was Gilbert Melendez, and I want to say it was Dominic Cruz. They did a they did an interview recently where they watched my Tiago Santos fight. They watched it they watched it without um, commentary, and um, they also watched it without they watched it after some time had passed, and they got to look at it without all the emotion, and they realized excuse me, and they realized. They realized maybe this fight, maybe John really did win the fight, you know. So I think, I think, I think I have set a high standard. Out of out of maybe 30 fights, only three people have put me into an actual competitive match. Um, seeing me with black eyes, seeing me uh, get punched is not something that happens every time I show up. So people definitely get really excited, um, even when an opponent throws a jab. When an opponent, you know, I, at one point, I, I think I fell to the ground. I wasn't hurt. I bounced right back up. But the fans loved that. You know what I mean? So it's hard when you, um, when people expect great things out of you at all moments. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still a martial artist like everyone else. I bleed. I have insecurities. I, I have weakness. I have pain right now. Um, so it's hard when not only you're you're fighting for these records, but you're fighting for. Uh, people's approval. You're fighting to look extraordinary every time. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, and with that said, though, I mean, I'm sure you would prefer to have the dominant performances, the finishes and everything. In your mind, is there anything you could be doing, whether it's in your preparation and the fights itself, to make these fights you know, more definitive and not having us have these discussions about being close afterwards? Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm happy with, with what myself and my team have been able to accomplish. You know, out of my last four fights, you know, I finished Alexander Gustafson, which was, I mean, he sent me to the hospital the first time. I, I, had, I experienced morphine for the first time with him, and I finished him. And then 
Anthony Smith. I didn't get the finish, but I mean, he was in the fetal position for a lot of that fight. That was a dominating performance. And uh, unfortunately, you know, for some of my fans, Tiago Santos and Dominic Reyes, um, I couldn't put them away and they, and they challenged me. Um, but there's good in that, you know. One of Tyson's, Mike Tyson's biggest problems was that he was so dominant, people lost interest. Um, so the fans got their money worth tonight by seeing me go through the ringer and, uh, and getting to see the heart of a champion. Um, that's, that's totally worth the 60 bucks you paid on pay-per-view. Uh, so uh, there, there's good, there's good, there's good in this. Yeah, and lastly for me, you mentioned the history books and records and stuff a few times up here. I mean, most title fight wins in history now. Uh, you're one of the few people that have 20 UFC wins, longest unbeaten streak, all these things. I thought, I think I saw you mention that you're one of the greatest American athletes in the UFC quote they sent out. What does just tonight making this type of history mean to you and your legacy? It means a lot. You know, as of right now, I don't, it's hard to, I've been so focused on, on winning. I, when in this fight, I haven't really thought about everything this means, um, but I know it means a lot. Um, there's been so many tremendous athletes to compete in the UFC and to do something that none of them has done. It means a lot. Uh, I'm happy for myself, but I'm more happy for my coaches. I mean, these guys are a part of something special. You know, when, they, when they, they get to tell their grandkids, you know, I trained possibly one of the baddest fighters ever, and, you know, and hopefully my record still stands when they have grandkids. Um, I, think, I think years from now, uh, what I did tonight will be more appreciated. I really don't see anyone beating this record for a very long time. Uh, if George St. Pierre came back, I guess he could compete for that to get, right? Could he? Yeah, he's one behind me. So George would be the only person that could come back and, and, and compete for this record. Outside of that, I don't see someone, I don't see anybody getting up there with that record. Mixed martial arts is getting harder and harder. The, the, the holes in people's games are closing up. Everyone has taken on offense now. Everyone knows a little jujitsu now. Um, everyone can switch stances and do things like that. So. I think I'll appreciate what happened tonight, you know, 10 years from now when that record is still standing. All right, John, uh, first question over here. Um, you, you talked a couple of times about the heart of a champion. I don't know if you were aware of um, the former Houston Rockets coach, Rudy Tomjanovic, um, when, they, um, when they defended their title in the 94-95 season, he talked about never underestimate the heart of a champion. Is that something you felt that uh, Dominic underestimated today, your heart and your chin, perhaps? Yeah, that chin, that chin is underrated for sure. I mean, I've watched Dominic knock so many people out and I feel like I took some of his cleanest shots and uh, at no point was I wobbled. You know, I think my vision went out at, at a few points, but you know, God has blessed me with a chin and that's something I can't take credit for at all. Either you're born with one or you're not. And I have a great chin, so I'm grateful for that. Um, but a heart of a champion, man, that's, that's something that, I don't know, can be taught by a coach. Um, I think that's also something you're born with. And I got to let that come out. I knew it was inside of me. One thing about fights like Tiago Santos and Gustafson and tonight, uh, you exercise that warrior spirit. You, you exercise that little bit of mm, uh, that a lot of people don't have, man. And, you know, when, when, the, when the going gets tough for a lot of people, they, they look for a way out. There's a little door. Rampage Jackson talked about it. There's a door that opens up and says, this is, this is going to be, a, this is a challenge here. The easy way out, you can take this fall. You can tap out. You can let them catch you. You can pretend like that body shot hurt and curl up. And, um, I'm grateful that I got to exercise my dog tonight. So, uh, the last question is, um, you've got a multitude of options at your disposal, whether it's you know, heavyweight, um, whether it's rematches with uh, Tiago Santos, who seems to be you know, forgotten a little bit, or um, you know, uh, Dominic, or we know Israel is still out there. Now, um, Israel's talked about you know, he, he has no problem fighting you whether, you, whether you have the title or, the, or not. He just wants to fight you uh, looking forward. Is that something that you'd be interested in if he, st if he does not have the title? Would you still be interested in him? No comment. I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs>
All right, John, right here. Uh, you mentioned that you had heard that uh, the Dominic had tore his ACL. Dana had mentioned that uh, when you had walked by, you you looked in, in some rough shape. How are you feeling right now? What what kind of injuries? And you mentioned your eye, but what are you? Uh, what kind of injuries are you going through right now? Um, I'm hurt. I'm not injured at all. Okay. A week from now, I'll be. I'll be totally fine. Well, speaking about a week from now, at, uh, in Rio Rancho, uh, Corey Anderson is fighting Jan Blachowicz. How do you see that fight going, and are you going to be there, and do you see that uh, those guys are, are someone that uh, you could be fighting next? Yeah, I, um, I think I'll be there. I, I think I'll be there. I normally don't attend a lot of MMA events, but I think it's going to be an, oper an awesome opportunity for me to see uh, fans, UFC fans that live in the state of New Mexico. And it's going to be more about uh, getting to see those guys and those guys getting to see me uh, than it's going to be about that fight. You know, I, I can study fights uh, online or, you know, on my laptop or whatnot. Um, I'm more excited to, you know, I don't want to sound arrogant to say this. Uh, there's a lot of people from New Mexico who would probably love to see me in person. And uh, I, want to, I want to show up for them. And I want to stick around. Do, uh, do some meet and greets or whatever the UFC. It's been a long time since I've done one of the guest fighters for an event and I want to be a guest fighter. That way I can meet as many people from New Mexico and let them know how much I love them. Awesome. Last question for me. Uh, you sold out the Toyota Center. You set a record here. Uh, before the fight on Media Day, you mentioned that you know if you would want to see how this fight went, and, and maybe that means that you should be fighting a little bit more outside of Vegas, maybe outside of the U.S. You mentioned Australia. What are some goals that you have after you see that uh, you know that, that your ability to, to sell out these events? Yeah, um, I don't really have I don't have many goals right now when it comes to to that side of things. I, I really couldn't control how many people showed up. I'm really grateful that so many people showed up. It's hard to really think for it right now, honestly. Yeah. All I'm thinking about is some food. Okay, thanks. Pizza. Yeah. Oh, there's pizza back there? There is some pizza back there. Oh, it's cold? I'm cool with cold pizza. I, I grew up on cold pizza. Hey, John, so you're left over here. Hey, man. Um, congrats on, on the, the win. Um, uh, Dana was in here earlier, and he said that he feels like uh, Dominic Reyes is the future of the division. Um, Dana said that? He did. OK. Um, just wanted to get your thoughts on that. How, how old is Dominic? 30. He's 30? I don't mind sharing my future with Dominic. Do you, do you think there will be a shared future? Do you think you'll, you'll see him again eventually? Yeah, man. A lot of these guys are going to be around for a very long time. Um, I don't think Dominic had any excuses for losing tonight. He lost. It was close. But they say close only counts on with handguns, uh, what, what, horseshoes and hand grenades, right? So he can try a thousand times. Uh, and I believe I'll, I'll edge him every single time. I don't know if you saw any of his uh, quotes. He's, he's pretty upset by the decision. He thinks he was disrespected by the judges. Any, any thoughts on that? No, I don't think he was disrespected. I got takedowns. He got no takedowns. I got his back. At one point, I put a hook in. Um, the fifth round, I was surprised uh, on, on the output difference we had. Um, I got to watch the fight, though. You know, I don't want to... I don't want to... It's hard to it's hard to speak with confidence when I haven't watched the fight. So after I watch the fight, I'll I'll give one of you guys a good interview and I'll, and I'll tell you uh, how I felt and I'll try to be as real as possible with you guys. Right now, I'm just kind of bullshitting, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> John Morgan, you got it. I met your mom in the lobby. She was so sweet. I think she was hitting on me a little bit too, I'm not going to lie. She says you're a very handsome man. Oh, she, li she likes the chocolate ones, huh? <laughs> That's funny. She was so sweet. I'll give you that interview, John. I respect that go-getter attitude. Yep. <laughs> Uh, John, a couple more from me. Um, a lot of people keep trying to push you to go to heavyweight, and I know you said earlier in the week that you know you're, you're completely fine with staying a light heavyweight and defending your title as many times as it takes. Um, do, do you think tonight shows that maybe maybe that cools the heavyweight talks a little bit? Maybe maybe you stay here at 205 for a little bit. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, there's great challenges. I feel like as long as these guys are dreaming. And, and, and they have aspirations to be the best in the world, I'll always have a job at light heavyweight. I can never think that I'm invincible. It's obvious that I'm not. And 
There's lots of work to be done. Every, every, they say styles make matchups, and we saw that tonight. We saw that tonight, so there's lots of work to be done at heavyweight. I mean, at light heavyweight. Last thing for me, I know you don't want to ask questions about Israel Adesanya or fighting him, but he has a pretty hard fight, is he not, in, in a few weeks against your friend, Yoel Romero. How do you see that fight going? Do you think he even gets by Romero? I wish you all nothing but the best. Okay. Thanks, John. <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. Where's that pizza? Ow! Love you guys.